Hi, I'm Mark Gonzalez. My agent's William Morris. <laughs> Welcome back to Real Skate Stories. The greatest skateboarders in history have given us so much inspiration. you on our poll who is the most influential skateboarder of all time in terms of what they did on a skateboard wow you guys came in hot with your votes and comments and it got heated and emotional but the results are in and you voted for mark gonzalez the gons captivated your hearts and minds more than any other skateboarder in history and it's fair to say that he is indeed the most influential skateboarder of all time. The Gons epitomizes skateboarding at its best. Creativity, individuality, innovation, artistic expression, skill, performance, and style. With an otherworldly X factor, he bridged the generations, bringing 70s and 80s speed power and flow, and then adding in tech and attacking gnarly obstacles, transforming skateboarding entirely in the process. So when the Gons was asked for his personal five most influential skaters. Five most influential skaters, Tony Alva. There are a few people in the world of skateboarding who have the balance, the timing, the speed, or the versatility of Tony Alva. He is amazingly limber, and he will admittedly go for anything, which makes him a standout in any crowd. The original Gumby Man of skateboarding, Tony uses his body weight to aid speed, traction, flow, or direction in all his riding. His body does indeed work constantly, and the use of his knees and ankles and whip or snap turns gives him an extra level of fine tuning that few other riders have yet discovered. At the recent opening of the Carlsbad Skate Park near Carlsbad Raceway, with the madly plunging and pitching motocross bikes in the background, Tony stood out as strangely similar to those racers as he climbed and dropped on the banks and bowls. Unlike the majority of riders, who can be classified as specialists in one field or another, Tony specializes in versatility. In slalom, his perfected sense of rhythm and timing are apparent, as he gyrates his body as rhythmically as a slow motion belly dancer. On banks and pools, his rubbery reflex is an all try anything attitude, combined to make him perhaps the best bank rider going. And in freestyle, his natural coordination shines through as he effortlessly cranks his body into multiple 360s or casual nose wheelies on the side of a bank. These are the qualities that put Tony Alva among the top riders in any area he chooses. A native of Skate Town, Santa Monica to most of us, he has ingrained himself in the aggressive characteristic of the skaters who have emerged from this area. Indeed, there's nothing passive about the writing of Tony Alva.
most influential skaters. Tony Alva, Shogo Kubo. Shogo Kubo. Maybe fun loving, but he takes his skating seriously. He's punctual and has a no nonsense attitude about everything he does. Shogo was born in the southernmost part of Japan, in Kagoshima City. Growing up in the Orient has given him an entirely different attitude about most things that we all take for granted, like being able to communicate. When he came to this country, he did not speak English. He now speaks two languages fluently, has adapted with total ease to the informal lifestyle of Southern California, and still manages to retain the moral values of his traditional upbringing. He is reluctant to speak of his own accomplishments, but is not hesitant to extol those of his friends. It was only by coincidence that his first introduction to skateboarding was at his judo class. One of the students there used to skate before and after class, and the whole rhythm and movement intrigued Shogo enough that he got to know Jay Adams and tried using his board. The moves came easily to him. He has a fine sense of balance derived from his varied athletic background. And most important of all, judo has taught him the proper art of falling. The banks, upon which he learned the finer aspects of skateboarding, could not intimidate him. He takes an aggressive approach towards skating, but does it in a subtle manner. At skate parks, he likes to give people a good show, but he really prefers the free and easy plush lands of West Los Angeles and Santa Monica, just skating with his many friends. His favorite spot was the now defunct Keyhole. Upland, Reseda, Skatopia, and the more recent Dog Bowl have become the terrain he travels most frequently. He rides a 30 inch Z-Flex equipped with tracker trucks and tunnel rocks or power flex wheels. He likes to skate to the music of Jimi Hendrix, explaining that Hendrix was 10 years ahead of his time. An innovator, completely original and unparalleled. He had been into competition when he was on the fabled Zephyr team, but felt that freestyle was too confining for him. He said that the whole contest scene deprived him of time that could be freely spent elsewhere. Shogo prefers walls. He says that when contests are held in bowls, he will again compete. His style is smooth, yet forceful. And when asked if he practices to maintain this appearance, he replied, no, when I'm in a bowl, I just have to go for it. It is not a routine that can be practiced. It's only the first move can be planned. He explained further, that each successive move depends on the manner in which the preceding move is completed. Frontside axle grinds, one wheelers on the coping, and two wheels out carving are his favorite maneuvers. He considers the frontside airborne the most difficult of all bowl maneuvers. Shogo explains, sometimes I think all this is too dangerous, but the moves come so fast that it's hard to give that idea much thought. His ambitions are not limited to skateboarding, but include becoming proficient upon the guitar he has been playing for over a year, and a trip to Japan where he would like to see how things have changed, what skateboarding and its parks are like there, and to see his mother. Five most influential skaters. Tony Alva, Shogo Kubo, George Orton. To the extent that an appearance in skateboarder has come to represent some sort of success in the sport, many a skater has been known to overstep the bounds of sanity for just that chance. Putting their physical well-being on the line, they turn on for the cameras in hopes of eventual recognition. The hard truth of the matter is that figuratively breaking into the magazine sometimes literally means breaking bones. And so in the case of George Orton. 
Ever since last summer, we've been receiving pictures and sequences of George performing phenomenal aerials at Paramount, Oxnard, and of course, Upland. As far as we know, George remains the only one to make an over vertical flyaway from the right side of the vertical pipe into the adjoining bowl. Regarding the whole campaign, George freely admits, I just wanted to be well known in the sport. The thing that sets him apart from the mere foolheartedly or gutsy, however, is that George does have the ability to back up the photographic evidence. On closer inspection, there's more to George Wildman Orton than the nickname implies. A longtime surfer and snow and water skier, George came into skating a scant few years ago. But George is also a very powerful skater, trim and well developed as a result of an earlier stint at weightlifting and high school competitive wrestling. The unusual combination has produced a very upright, somewhat bow-legged style of skating, equally adaptable to fast, precise carves or high, even straight up and down aerials. Although an all-around park rider, George is generally known as one of the pioneers of the frontside aerial. The effort, as he relates, was a costly one. He explains, It was something new, at least something I hadn't seen done before, so I took quite a few spills learning how. I started by coming off the top of the bowl, not off the wall, so I ended up landing on my hip and elbow a lot and chipped a lot of bones. But now that George has established himself amongst his peers, he is able to progress at a less feverish pace with fewer falls. Five most influential skaters, Tony Alva, Shogo Kubo, George Orton, Alan Galfin. Few skaters ever reach that plateau of innovation where their peer group so recognizes their singular accomplishments and names a maneuver after them. The tie slide, the Schutfeldt fairing, the Logan arc wheelie, the Adams hand plant, and the Valdez inverted aerial come immediately to mind as examples. But after only three years of riding, Hollywood, Florida local Alan Ollie Gelfand has been granted admittance to this select group. His developments, the Ollie pop, and the subsequent no handed Ollie aerial rank as two of the hottest moves on the vanguard scene. While Gelfand's present accomplishments are highly noteworthy, his steps towards getting them are perhaps even more remarkable. Gravitating at first towards Florida's abundant backyard fabricated ramps and later to the region's surf-styled skate parks, then, two years ago, feeling there was more to life than just frontside grinds and trying to do something different, the young skater began hitting air pop lip slides. From there, the Ollie Pop was the next logical step. About this time, several new parks offering more vertical potential opened up in the state, and Allen's unique approach rapidly progressed in the newly available half pipes, elliptical pools, and unrounded coping. Eventually, he began gathering momentum. Gelfand also began entering contests and placing high in several despite a few personal reservations. I don't like contests themselves. I just go to get together with the others and learn. Whatever the reason, as a competitor, Alan has been known to win events under pressure that he never even practices ordinarily. The subject of money brings up another aspect of Alan's rise to prominence. Last summer, 
Feeling constrained by the lack of new stimuli, he decided to journey west to look and learn. Next, he parlayed 38 free burger with purchase coupons at Burger King into another financial bonanza. A few days later, Gelfand was in California, filling his mind and also blowing a lot of others with his entire act. In comparing California to Florida, Allen states, while there are only a handful of top pros at home, in the West, there's hundreds of them. When you skate in California, you get pushed a lot more. Skaters he rides with and respects include Mike Fulmer, Ray Rodriguez, Stacy Peralta, Clyde Rogers, and Tim Scroggs. He also gives credit for their leadership in Florida to Nassworthy, Bruce Walker, and Hunter Joslin. Speaking on his current goals, he says, I'm just trying to get maneuvers down to a science. I want to be able to do them at will. General advice, he says, skate every day and humor helps. You can't be too serious. influential skaters. Tony Alva, Shogo Kubo, George Orton, Alan Galfin, Rodney Mullen. Mullen began skateboarding at the age of 10 on New Year's Day of 1977. 
after a neighborhood friend introduced him to a skateboard. He promised his strict father that he would see skateboarding the first time he became seriously injured. Mullen practiced in the garage of the family home while wearing a comprehensive protective pad setup, a precaution that was part of the deal with his father. By 1978, even though he'd only owned a skateboard for just over a year, Mullen placed fifth in the boys' freestyle category at the U.S. Open Championships at Kona Skate Park in Jacksonville. Skateboard manufacturer Bruce Walker saw his performance and sponsored Mullen through Walker Skateboards from 1978 to 1980. Mullen's biggest influence in skateboarding at the time was the professional skateboarder Jim McCall, who was coached in his early years by Walker. Mullen was also influenced by Florida pros Ed Womble, George McClellan, Clyde Rogers, Tim Scroggs, and Kelly Lynn. When his family moved to a farm in a remote part of Florida, Mullen began perfecting his flat ground techniques and he has said that his isolation and lack of terrain naturally guided him towards freestyle skateboarding. He cites 79 and 80 as his most creative time, a time when he was predominantly a loner who counted the cows of the family farm as his best friends. Mullen then continued to dominate all the contests he entered, culminating in a win at the Oceanside Nationals in June 1979. In 1980, the 14-year-old Mullen entered the Oasis Pro Competition, defeating the world champion Steve Rocco. Mullen also spotted a 12-year-old skater who introduced himself as Tony Hawk. Before Tony was sponsored, before anyone knew anything about him, he made a big impression on him, and the two would go on to become good friends. Shortly thereafter, Mullen turned professional as a member of the Bones Brigade. Based on the recommendation of Tim Scroggs of Mullen to company co-founder Stacy Peralta, who Mullen highly admired. Mullen competed voraciously through the 80s, often frustrating competitors and judging with his consistency and progressive ability. He truly had no competition. Over the following decade, he entered 35 freestyle events and won 34 of them.
time for Rodney Mullen. Like most skaters at the time, Mullen skated a mix of styles, including some vert, before skateboarding became clearly delineated. Over the following years, he transitioned from freestyle to street, adapting his accumulated freestyle skills to street and inventing or expanding upon additional tricks in the process. Mullen enrolled in the chemical engineering program at the University of Florida, leaving during his senior year prior to completing his degree in order to take over management of World Industries with Steve Rocco. Throughout the 80s, Mullen invented many of skating's flip tricks. Mullen's tricks are now considered the essential building blocks of both modern street skateboarding and vert skateboarding. With skateboarding transforming itself in the early 90s to tech-style freestyle moves on the street, Rodney Mullen is now known as the godfather of street skateboarding. Five most influential skaters. Tony Alva, Shogo Kubo, George Orton, Alan Galfin, Rodney Mullen. There you go. Five most influential skateboarders of all time. We gotta put a girl in there though too, so Laura Thornhill. Talking about skateboards for Laura is almost as exciting as riding one, or at least more exciting than talking about anything else. While relaxing with her friends after a good hour's workout on her board, She's enthusiastic and attentive when the talk is of new tricks or how she likes showing up the guys. But when the conversation wanders off onto other topics, she becomes restless and jumps back up to ride a while longer. It's only natural because it is what she likes doing best. Laura is a relative newcomer to skateboarding. When she saw skateboards appearing around her hometown of Torrance, she decided they looked like fun and that she would like to try riding one. So for her 13th birthday, just a year and a half ago, she got her first skateboard and has been on it as much as possible ever since, which is, as she says, at least three hours every day. The amount of riding that Laura does shows in her style and grace. She does the tricks that the guys do, nose wheelies, 360s, kick turns, but with the flow and grace characteristic of the women skaters. She excels at the difficult wheelies and her natural rhythm puts her on top in slalom. Freestyle is Laura's favorite style of riding. This all adds up to a style that is uniquely her own, although she is no doubt influenced by the styles of her favorite riders. Greg Weaver, Steve Cathy, Bruce Logan, Hi Page, and Chris Yandal. Quite an impressive and tasteful list. When Laura is learning a new trick, she devotes most of her time to it until she gets it down the way she thinks it should be done. She has no real teachers, but instead watches to see how a particular trick is done, then goes off by herself to practice. Her hardest trick is the spacewalk, and just the mention of this trick sends her back on her board to try it again. She'll have it wired in no time too. Laura's favorite place to ride is the reservoir, a mellow, sloped bowl where she likes to let loose. Laura says she's going to keep quiet about her who's hot until the magazine comes out. I'm not going to tell anyone, she says. I'm just going to let them see it for themselves. The same philosophy also applies for her writing. There's no need to say more, for we can see it all for ourselves. It's no surprise that he picked skaters from his roots, the 70s. What is very interesting is how his five picks cover the entire spectrum, choosing perhaps the best overall, most stylish, most bionic, 
most innovative, most technical, and then he actually added a sixth for diversity, a woman. Like an art form, it's more like to not compare, it's more to appreciate others. I think it's all, it's all up to individuals, and that's why I think skateboarding is such a neat sport. It gives people a chance to express themselves in their own way, and it's an individual's type of sport, skateboarding.